This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everyone, I am super excited for today's video. I'm going to be talking about several of the best waxes for candle makers. Well, let me rephrase that. I shouldn't say best because it all depends what you're going for. I will say some of my favorite waxes for candle making. Now, I do want to start with a couple disclaimers or caveats. To begin with, this is my current list of favorites today. However, it is subject to change. I feel like I have tested like a hundred waxes on the market, uh, but I'm always getting new ones. Manufacturers and suppliers are always sending me new ones to test out and give feedback on. And so this could change easily in a month or six months and certainly by next year. So I will try to keep doing these type of videos to keep you updated on what my favorite or new current favorite waxes are. The other disclaimer is that I'm only focusing on waxes that are common and have easy access to you fellow candle makers. Mostly to beginner candle makers, small, medium sized companies. I'm not gonna be talking about ones that are proprietary or only sold direct by manufacturer. I'm talking mostly about waxes that most viewers and subscribers here on this channel would have easy access to. And then lastly, even though I have tested a ton of waxes in my candle making career, I'm not going to include ones that I just don't have a ton of information on or that I don't have a lot of experience with. Because if I haven't had a ton of experience with testing with them, then I can't really give you honest, confident feedback. So this list is my current personal favorites that I would recommend either new, beginner, or even intermediate candle makers to consider trying if they haven't already. All right, let's get to it. Hi everyone, my name is Wade, the owner of Black Tie Barn, and here on this channel we talk about making candles, selling candles, running a business, tutorials, demonstrations, how-tos, tips and tricks, really the works. So if any of that interests you, we'd love to have you for future videos, and of course to check out past videos, please consider subscribing below to the channel. It is free, so we'd love to have you around. And if you like this video at the end or at any point, feel free to give it a thumbs up as well. I would appreciate it. All right, let's get to the list. The first one is gonna come as no huge shock or surprise because I have used it a lot on this channel already, and that is Pro Blend 600. It's roughly a 50-50 para-soy blend. More specifically, it's 52% soy and a 48% paraffin. The reason I like that wax is it's very, very user-friendly. It's very easy to use. It's easy to wick. It's got a kind of moderate to low melt point, which is what helps make it easy to wick. It's got average hot throw. It's really kind of just a good overall wax. That's why I use it in a lot of my testing videos. I feel like it just gives a great baseline across the board, but it has good cold throw, good hot throw. It wicks very easily. It accepts color really well. It's just a good overall wax. The next wax will also come as no surprise, and that is IGI 6006. It is also a parasoy blend, although it's 70% paraffin, 30% soy, and it's also on the top five or 10 of most candle makers waxes. Why? Well, it's very common. You can find it almost every supplier. There's a lot of information out there about how to use it. A lot of people using it to help give you guidance and, and tips and tricks along the way. It's got really good hot throw. It's got moderate cold throw. It holds up really well in heat as the melt points around 130 degrees, which is higher than most container waxes. Uh, and so it does hold up a little bit better in summer heat and summer shipping. It takes color very well and gives you nice, good, vibrant colors if that's what you're looking for. Uh, wicking can be a little tricky on this one and it's kind of sensitive to different jar sizes. So sometimes there's kind of a three to four inch jar so it'd be kind of tough to wick with this this wax. So it does take some experimentation and it does take some getting used to, but overall it's a really good wax. Next up would be Coconut Apricot. Now there are a few different suppliers and manufacturers that sell this. So I'm not going to necessarily pick one specifically, mostly because I don't actually use it myself, but I have tested it. I have used it in several candle reviews and I think it's a pretty good wax. First of all, it looks fantastic. I love the creaminess. I love the color of it. Um, I, it burns very clean. As far as hot throw goes, I would consider it about average, uh, maybe a touch above average. It's, it's a really good one. It's got great cold throw. It's a very luxurious wax. And for that, I would say it, it definitely gets bonus points just because of the appearance. If that's the market you're going for, then you're not going to be disappointed with that wax. Uh, like I said, it is on the pricier side, but it has an overall very great appearance. And most candle makers using it tend to really say good things about it. All right, next on the list is MP. 117. Now I've only found this so far at Candle Science. I'm not sure who the actual manufacturer is of this wax. And it's uh, it's a wax I've only been testing fairly recently, but I gotta say it's mostly really good results and feedback so far. The hot throw is awesome. The melt point is very low, which can be good and bad. It's good in the sense that it's very easy to wick. It burns very easily, very evenly. Uh, and like I said, it has really, really good hot throw. However, the low melt point can be an issue, problematic when you're shipping uh, in hot summer. You probably don't want to use this wax if you're doing outdoor summer craft booths. Uh, but overall, other than that, it's a really, really good 
wax. It is 100% paraffin, which is partially why it has such great hot throw. But if that is not an issue for you, I would highly suggest checking out this wax. Great color, easy to wick, fantastic hot throw, uh, very good jar adhesion. Overall, really, really nice looking. It doesn't look like a standard container paraffin wax. It doesn't have a ton of super high sheen. It just, it looks great. And honestly, I don't know that most people would even know they're using a paraffin wax when they use this. Uh, it's a very interesting wax. I definitely wanna do some more experimentation, some more testing with it. But so far I gotta say early results, they're pretty good. All right, another wax is called CB2 Soy Blend. Now this is also known uh, under another name, Soy Bliss, which I think is sold by uh, 1617. And it's also a really, really good wax. It's a soy blend, but it does have a small amount of paraffin in it. Uh, but overall, I would say this is a pretty good wax as well. It's got both good hot throw and cold throw. I wouldn't say that they're necessarily better than something like MP117 as far as hot throw goes, but it is good. It's got great appearance. It's a single pore wax. And overall, it's a very functional, good all around wax. And it's got a higher melt point, which will again, help it with shipping and summer heat. Another one that many of you might be familiar with is called IGI 4636. Now this used to be called J50 wax. Now I haven't used this a ton and I don't use it in any of my products, but I will say that everyone I know that uses it loves using it. They only say good things about it. I really have never seen anyone complain about this wax. Yeah, it is a paraffin wax. It's got great hot throw and again, an elevated melt point, which will allow it to be shipped fairly easily during summer and warm temperatures, at least better than most other container waxes. And it's also single pour. By the way, I will have these suppliers listed in the description below where you can find all these different waxes. Now, the next one is kind of similar to another one I talked about earlier, but this is a coconut apricot cream. The one that I'm most familiar with is by the manufacturer Cal Wax. It can be sold, it's sold at a few different suppliers, but that's the manufacturer I know for sure. It's clean burning, it's biogradable, it's natural, and it's not the only one on this list that does meet that. So if you're looking for that all natural or vegan wax and that's your target market, well, this wax will meet those parameters. It's easy to use, it's a single pour wax as well, and it's got a bright white color. It's got a nice slow even burn, it's got great jar adhesion as well. In my experience, it's had really good hot throw and cold throw. It's made from a blended coconut wax and a minuscule amount of FDA approved food grade paraffin, mostly for stability. Before we continue, a brief moment to tell you about Skillshare who is sponsoring this portion of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community and a great place to learn new skills and to get inspired. With thousands of online classes, there's so much content for you to choose from. And if you're anything like me, then there's never enough. Whether it's another craft, running a business, branding and marketing, personal finance, the list goes on. I jump in on classes pretty routinely. In fact, a recent class I took was called Brand Strategy, Build a Business That Lasts by Mark Pollard. In an industry like candle making or really honestly any industry these days, branding is so important. You've got to market your business. You want to find a nice way to settle into the industry, but more importantly, a way to stand out and then build brand loyalty to keep customers coming back to you. So really, I love learning as much as I possibly can about branding and marketing and running a business. I just, I love that kind of content. I think it's really, really important. And one of my personal favorite things about Skillshare in general is that you can do all of this ad-free so you can just stay focused. No distractions, just stay focused on the content. And if you need a break, uh, you're going on a trip or you just need to just hit pause and hit the reset button, you can do that and come back to the class at any time right where you left off. So it's just a great online learning platform and I would definitely suggest you check it out. So I would encourage you to check out Skillshare in the description below. The first 1,000 people to use that link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. All right, on to the next wax. Next on the list is AccuSoy 10 or AccuBlend. Many of you might know this as Soy 10. It's also sold by many suppliers. Now this is another soy blend wax, but again, it does have a minuscule amount of uh, food grade paraffin, which is very common for soy blends. Most soy waxes do have a little bit of paraffin in it. One of the major benefits of this wax though, uh, compared to other soy blends, is that it has a slightly higher melt point, somewhere in the 120 to 130 degree range, which is a little above average for soy waxes, which does mean it can hold up a little bit better to shipping in high summer heat or doing outdoor events in the summer. It does have okay jar adhesion. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Uh, it, it just kind of depends on your vessel. And, and to be fair, that applies to most of these waxes on this list as well. I would say it has average hot throw, but it has good consistent color and I would say it's an overall consistent performing wax as well. All right, next is IGI 4627. Now, anyone that's ever used this wax will probably tell you that there's just no beating the hot throw. And in my experience, I would say the same thing. I don't think the hot throw can be matched by any other wax that at least I've ever used. It is a all paraffin wax. It's a very, very soft, almost like a Vaseline texture. So it can be kind of difficult to use and get out of the, out of the bag. Uh, but once you get used to using it and you have a process, then, uh, then, then it's fine. I wouldn't use, uh, I wouldn't use that as a reason of not to use it. It just takes getting used to. 
but the hot throw on this is just ridiculous. It's incredible. It can be kind of tricky to wick this, uh, being the type of, it's a very, very viscous paraffin wax. It can be tough to wick and, and get the wick down right so you're not having any kind of performance or burn issues, but it's got to be on this list for the hot throw alone. It's just impossible to leave off this list. Next on this list is the Cocoa Soy Wax, and it goes by several names. You might know it as VCS or Cal Wax or EC26, but again, it is a coconut soy blend wax. You can find it from a few different suppliers as well uh, under those different names. It's also clean burning, biodegradable, natural wax. It's a single pour, very easy to use wax. It's got a nice slow even burn with really good jar adhesion, again, at least in my experience. And this one is made from soy, coconut, and also a minuscule amount of food grade paraffin. Now, I know that's 10, but I've got a bonus, and I feel like it's an honorable mention that it has to be on this list. And that is AAK 464 or 454. And I'm actually gonna put them both on this list because I don't know which one I prefer of the other. And I'm gonna explain why I have it on this list, even though I don't use a ton of it. If you're looking for an all natural, an all soy or soy coconut blend, then this has to be on the list for a couple of reasons. One, you can find it a lot of different places. There's a lot of people using it. So you again, you can get a lot of feedback and constructive tips on how to use this wax best. And you're just looking for something straightforward. It doesn't have a lot of crazy ingredients blended into it. Then you could definitely look at 464 or 454. 464 is the all soy wax. 454 is a soy coconut blend. And they're both sold by AAK. Now, these waxes are the ones you will typically see have some kind of like funky tops and weird resets after the candle is burned and then rehardens. And if you don't mind those kind of funky looking ashy or crater tops and that doesn't bother you, then definitely check these waxes out. If you are someone that that drives nuts, then, you know, stay away from these waxes because you can fix it temporarily, but they almost always come back. So this really just, it just depends on you. There are a lot of people that just love this wax. They start with it from day one as a beginner and they just use it for their entire career and they're perfectly happy with it. Now, I personally prefer the 454 a little bit over 464, but that's just a personal preference. I do wish the hot throw was better on both of them. Uh, I would say that the 464 is a little easier to wick, but the 454 has a slightly better hot throw. Either way, I don't use a ton of these waxes in my products, but I feel like it has to be on this list. It's a wax that so many beginners start with. And like I said, there's a ton of information out there that can help you using these waxes. So they just, it has to be an honorable mention at the very least. All right, guys, I know this was a quick rundown of uh, 10 plus waxes that I think are great waxes to use, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or even someone that's been running a candle business for several years. And as a reminder, these are based off several factors that I care about. And it depends on when you ask me. You ask me again in a month, then some of these might change. But as of today, these are 10 plus waxes that I would recommend checking out if you haven't used them already. I'm super curious though, for all of you watching, let me know in the comments which of these waxes you use and which of them you really, really like and prefer. Or if you're really not sure, which of these you might be interested in trying next. Don't forget to check out Skillshare. Remember the first thousand people to use the link in the description below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.